If you ever plan on removing or upgrading your intake manifold, if you ever plan on doing a carbon clean on your vehicle, or if you ever plan changing your water pump to your vehicle, this video is going to be the video for you. This is part one of my journey to an IE intake manifold. First step that I'm going to do in order to remove this factory intake manifold is I'm going to come right over here to the intake manifold and right above the intake manifold, right above the throttle body, you're going to have this intake air sensor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and unplug this. As you can see right here, I'm just going to come right over here and unplug this. All right, so you can leave that in there because you're going to transfer that to the new one, but you want to unplug that so as you're trying to go to the next part, that you don't accidentally pull it or break it. So once I remove that part, I'm gonna come right over here to the actual throttle body. And right when you go to the throttle body, you're gonna have that tubing coming from the actual intercooler that conjoins with the throttle body. And you're gonna go ahead and remove this pipe right here. And right here, as you can see, I have a flathead. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a flathead just to remove that. What that's going to do is it's going to give me free space down at the bottom. So that's the next thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to just back up so you can see it. So I'm going to remove the piping coming from the intercooler, coming to my throttle body. All right, guys, so I got that loose. So I'm just going to just kind of give it like a nudge, just kind of just a hit. There you go. So now I have my charge pipe unloosened. So now the throttle body is free. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and unloosen the other side as well, just to get this part out the way. You know, a lot of times you wanna just go that extra mile and remove parts if you need to, just so it won't be in the way, or it won't be a conflicting issue, or you can accidentally break something. Cause <laughs> believe me, when you're doing these kind of jobs, you can just touch something. A lot of this plastic on here could have been on here for a long time and brittle. So I'm just gonna do myself a favor, unplug this water methanol and just go ahead and remove this entire pipe instead of just removing one end and tucking it away so I won't damage it. All right, guys, so as you can see, I now have the charge pipe that's coming from the actual intercooler to the throttle body out the way. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug right over here. You're gonna have the actual throttle body plug. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just pull this out. You're gonna push in and pull this out. So this is gonna be, as you can see, the throttle body plug. A lot of people may not have this issue, but those of you who have modded your car and you have an oil catch can, especially if it's a CTS Turbo or it's an IE catch can, you may find this to be an issue. You want to go ahead and remove the essential parts that you need from the catch can so it won't block um, what you're working on. And of course, I'm going to have to end up uh, removing this bracket as well. Like I said, these are my issues because I have these extra parts. But if you don't have this part, just dis disregard this step right here. So guys, the next general step would be if you did not have a catch can or African plate like this, you're going to have a traditional PCV valve. It's going to have a tube that's going to come right over here to this air intake. So what you want to do is generally pull out this tube to release it. So that way that the actual air intake manifold will be standalone. So you would pull it out. I'm going to show you a picture right here of what I'm talking about. Yeah, so on that picture, you just want to gently pull this off. Be careful with this so it doesn't break. You're going to be able to pinch it and pull it out. All right, guys. So the next step is going to be to take this coolant hose, and you're going to go right over here at the bottom to this screw. It's going to take a T30, and you're going to unloosen this coolant hose. Okay, once you unloosen this coolant hose, as you can see, I took out the screw right over here you have like a little clamp on this wire harness you're just going to just pull that clamp off you move those wires out the way all right guys so next step you have an evap line which is right over the intake manifold right here so as you can see on the evap line you have these two grooves so what you do on the evap line is you grab these two grooves right here once you grab those two grooves it pushes in and you just able to just pull it right out just like that. And you just move it to the side. Just get it out the way. 
So now the evap line is now removed. All right, guys, so the next step, you have another evap line, and this is actually called the purge valve. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get, you know, you're generally supposed to use the, the right tool in order to, you know, remove this, which is like a crimp plier to remove this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this right here, which is fine. And so the only thing I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna squeeze this together and pull, pull this evap line out right here. So that's the next step I'm gonna do. Let me just zoom in so you can see it. So I'm gonna squeeze this together with this plier. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this out. As you guys can see right here, I just moved the clamp down here. You don't have to remove this clamp, but once you um, hold this clamp down and you push it down, you then at that point have to pull this out. Be very careful because this is very brittle and it's on there really tight. They have a special tool that you press that retracts it open. That would be better preferred. But what I did is I just got like a little flathead screwdriver and I just kind of turned it and it was able to pull this part out. So then the next thing you're gonna do is you see right there, you see this part right here? This is part of the, the purge line. This is a purge line. And if you look right here and you kind of go down there, you see it's connected to this right here. So what I'm gonna do, as you can see, I'll give you a better angle. As you can see, As you can see that purge line, it doesn't have a clamp on it. As you can see, it doesn't have a clamp on it. They normally do, but there's no need for a clamp. You can just pull that right off. So I'm gonna pull it off just pretty much straight. Make sure you pull it off straight. So you see me guys? Pulled it off straight, just like that. All right guys, so the next thing you're gonna do is you see right here, this is gonna be the fuel pump. And right below the fuel pump, you have this um, nut that connects the fuel line. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it this way. So I'm just gonna basically just use a wrench and I'm just gonna turn it this way. And when you loosen that, sometimes it's good. So when you loosen that right there at the bottom, sometimes it's good to loosen this as well because you don't want to put any stress or bend this because that has to fit on there perfectly and there's generally not any room to play so sometimes i move this top part off and i'll see if it's necessary but yeah you loosen it this way and you this is optional to pull this off so as you guys can see i loosened it this way and now as you can see it's no longer attached to the fuel pump. So all I did was loosen it this way. Now I'm just gonna just kind of work my way up to right here. You gotta be careful with Audis, man. They loosen in different directions. You can, they loosen in different directions. You can easily strip something. So as you can see, this one goes the complete opposite way. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one out. All right, guys. So after that, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna remove your camshaft sensor. And it's gonna be right here. It normally just plugs out. I'm just gonna take mine out because I have a special heating tape around it. But yeah, you just can just unplug this camshaft sensor from right here. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take mine out for the sake, of, for the sake of not having to re-tape this part right here. Okay. All right, guys. So the next step, this green plug goes on top right here. Just FYI, this this green plug goes on top. This is actually my knock sensor. This is gonna be, I believe, the plug for your fuel injectors. And this is gonna be the, the stuff to the general electrics in your car. So you're gonna remove all three of these plugs. So that's the next thing you're gonna do. And we're getting close guys. Etched all three of the plugs. And so I don't have this on my car, but I'm gonna show you a picture. This is it right here. Okay, so guys, that brace goes right under the intake manifold and it connects to 
right at the bottom of the throttle body right there. And I just never put it back in. There was never a purpose for it to me, but you would have to unscrew that from under the intake manifold. And I believe um, intake manifold um, and from the bottom part, and it's very easy. It just screws right off. You use, a, I think a 10 triple square at the bottom and at the top is just a bolt. Guys, right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, you see that little red switch right there? Let me see if I can zoom in. That's gonna be the water pump and that's the cooling sensor temp. So you can take it out now or you can take it out after, but just keep in mind when it's time for you to pull out the intake manifold, you wanna make sure that you do not pull it out and rip that part out. So um, I'm gonna try to see if I can stick my hand in there and pull it out. But yeah, that's the next thing you're gonna do. And this might be extra work. If you think it's too hard to get to that or if you can't get it out with a pick or something, Unfortunately, you can move the throttle body, but that's extra work, like I said, but removing the throttle body will put you in a position where you can get right to that. Beginners or the people who are trying to champion this for the first time, I went ahead and took off the throttle body just so I can show you guys how to get to that um, plug that goes to the water pump. And also, you know, if you take off the um, actual throttle body, it'll make it a lot easier to get to these other plugs as well. Like I said, this knock sensor goes on top of here. I just, it just fell down. And, you know, like I said, this is gonna be the plug for the fuel injectors and this is gonna be to the general electrics in the car. So that's gonna be the plug to the water pump. So FYI, if you're ever trying to replace your water pump, you take up the intake manifold to get to the water pump and that's how you replace it. But yeah. So as you can see, I have my throttle body right over here. Took that off with the throttle body spacer. And now I'm gonna take that plug out. Got that plug out. Now let's go to the next step. So as you can see, right over here, right at the top of the intake manifold, you're gonna have one bolt. You're gonna have two bolt. You don't take off this bolt. So two bolt. You're gonna have three bolt. You're gonna have four. And you're gonna have five. So those are gonna be five Torx bolts that you're gonna have to remove from the top. And at the bottom, if you look right there, you're gonna have a 10 millimeter bolt. And if you look into the next channel, you're gonna have that same Torx bit that you're gonna have at the top. And that's gonna be, let's see guys, a T27. So it's gonna be a T27. The next channel, you're gonna have another T27. And then on that outer part over here, you're gonna have another 10 millimeter bolt. All right, guys, so I have all of the bolts out. They're right over there. So now I'm going to remove this oil filter. I'm going to, you necessarily don't need to move this oil filter, but I'm just trying to simplify it for anyone that's trying to do this on their own, just to obstruct anything that will prevent you from taking the intake manifold out. And once I take this out, then it's going to be about time to pull this out. All right, I'm going to use this, this um, oil filter wrench to take it out just because I like doing oil changes. It goes right on top and then I just unscrew it. But, you know, generally you can use something like this to take it out. And sometimes it's even hand tightened. You don't have to tighten it all the way, but I'm going to use this to take out the oil filter. And you want to put something to cover up the oil filter so you don't, um, once you take it out, so you don't get Guys, anything. I always try to block anything that could cause something to go into the oil filter where that goes or my charge pipe just you know just for extra precaution so now let's go guess what time it is guys it's tool time no i'm just kidding all right guys it's time to take out the intake manifold let me see if i can put this on the guys, stand what you want to do is you want to it's going to feel really tight like it's stuck but you want to wiggle it from side to side just like this All right, guys, the intake manifold is now out. Sorry for that GoPro view, but I had to do what I had to do. So as you can see, I have 
um, one fuel injector that's stuck inside. So to get this out, I just gently went behind this and I just pulled, pulled out this way and it pulled out, you know, the one that's stuck in there. But you do have to be gentle because this is plastic and it's really brittle and it can break. Fuel injector out. So now I can put it with the wrist of the fuel injectors on this intake manifold. So as you can see, it's supposed to come out with the fuel injectors in it and plugged in, but sometimes if it seizes up, um, then you would have to, at that point, take out that extra fuel injector. As you guys can see, I have successfully taken out the factory intake manifold. So right now my goal is to transfer this fuel rail line, the plugs for the fuel injectors, as well as the General Electrics, onto the integrated engineering intake manifold. However, 